In the previous video, I made and directed the walls of our Catio cat enclosure for Mickey the cat, who's an indoor cat due to his immunodeficiency virus. But then I had second thoughts about how to build the roof. Originally, I was going to add a batten to the wall and then add joists in line with the wall studs and then chicken wire over the top. But then I realized that that type of roof would make my life difficult when the time comes to clean out my gutters. Think maintenance, Keith. I've now had time to think through the various options and before getting started building, I thought I'd talk through them. First of all, I don't actually need a complete roof. You can actually buy these things called cat fence brackets, and I could have run some battens along those and installed chicken wire, but the trouble is they're incredibly expensive, 27 pounds for one bracket. I'd need 12, which would have been 324 pounds. So then I thought I'll make my own. I'll just buy some metal bar, bend it in a metal working vise, drill a few holes. But then I found these things at a fraction of the cost and these look like they'd do the same job. You can find these if you search for galvanized barbed wire bracket or universal top rafter bracket. And they come in various different sizes. I'm sure they'd work fine. But seeing as I've already painted all my wood and seeing that I don't really want to order things and wait for them to arrive, and seeing as this is a woodworking channel, I thought instead I would make a structure that serves the same purpose that's totally bespoke to my space. So let's do that. I'm using pressure treated three by twos for this, which measure 70 by 45 millimeters. I got these from a builder's merchants. I'm checking the joists for camber by sighting down the length. Ideally, I want any arc in the timber to be upwards so that in time with seasonal movement, they settle down to being straight along the length. As three meters is the width of my enclosure, I start by popping one on top and then marking onto them the position of the uprights of my wall. I can then transfer those markings onto another length of the three by two. And I'm going to need some noggins, so I started ripping down some 550 millimeter lengths. I'm going to assemble all of these pieces together to build a roof frame, and I'm using polyurethane glue, which is ideal for exterior use. And then I can add my noggins where I marked up each of the upright positions earlier so that my roof noggins will align with them. I had a couple of decking screws in each joint to bring it all together. And after a few paint touch ups, that's the first frame done. If you watched my previous video, you'll know that I did not enjoy fitting the chicken wire and I vowed to never use it again. And I was at a car boot sale at the weekend and somebody was selling two rolls of this stuff, galvanized steel mesh. It's a much thicker gauge than the chicken wire and also it's not stretchy. So I think working with this is going to be better. The downside is that this is 100 millimeters or four inch square mesh. And I'm a bit worried that that might be big enough for a cat's head to poke through, but I might try doubling it up to close those openings a bit. And my gut feel is that doing that is going to be less annoying than working with the chicken wire. So let's give it a try. It went on with no hassle whatsoever, and you can see I'm just folding it over, overlapping by half, to basically give me four by two inch openings rather than four by four. With the mesh added, I can lift it up on top of the wall. A couple of clamps hold it in place temporarily, and then I can drive in a few screws from underneath to fix it to the wall frame. I'm cutting some 45 degree angles to give me some corner braces. These are also 550 millimeters in length. I treated the ends with a couple of coats of Preserver. Here I'm using a length of 3x2 just to lift up the roof frame until it's sitting level and then I can secure my support braces with some hex head exterior timber screws. I added one of these for each upright to make the roof frame nice and rigid. Right, with the roof structure now complete on the first wall, I now need to think about the second wall, but this one is going to be difficult for two reasons. Firstly, there's a downpipe in the way at the end of the wall, and that means I can't just build the frame down on the floor and then lift it up like I did with the first one. And secondly, the span here is just over three meters. I think it's about 3.3 meters, and all of my timber is three meters in length. So I'm thinking, is this an opportunity to cut my first ever scarf joint? Can you even cut a scarf joint on a three by two? I don't know, maybe we'll find out, but I might as well get the parts that I can built right now. And then I'll worry about that 3.3 meter span when I get round to it. The first beam is going to sit on top of the wall plate and be fully supported. So I'm cutting a 45 on the end so that I can splice a shorter piece onto the end to give me the extra length needed.
A bit of glue and a couple of screws driven in at an angle fix it in place securely. Then I added my noggins which again are added in line with the wall uprights and again are 550mm in length. The last noggin I managed to just squeeze in between the downpipe and the wall and this will also give me a nice fixing point to the wall so I drill a pilot hole and add a concrete screw. Then I cut and installed more corner braces, same as before. Now I just need my long beam to complete the inside of the frame and I thought why not give that scarf joint a try. My timber measures 70mm in width. If I multiply that by 3 that's 210mm so that's going to be the length of my joint. I make a mark about 20mm in from the edges and then join them with a diagonal and I mark up 90 degrees at the ends of the diagonal. It's actually a mistake to do this at this point though and I'll talk about that shortly. Then at the halfway point I'm making a mark 15mm in from the diagonal to give me an offset from the centre and mark up what is going to be my cut line. And this is the point when I realised that my 90 degree ends should be at 90 degrees to this cut line rather than the diagonal line I marked up previously. Honestly though it's such a small variance in angle that I decided not to bother marking that and instead I just compensated for it a bit while making the cut with the circular saw. So I'm getting rid of the end and then I can cut along the diagonal. Now I'm marking 15mm either side of my centre point and this is where I'll be adding some wedges later on. And now I just need to cut out a notch. I'm going to do that with my handsaw for the cross cuts. Then a plunge cut with a circular saw to establish the diagonal cut line before using my multi tool to get to the bits that the circular saw couldn't reach. And then finally more handsaw work. Then I can just finish up with a chisel to get my mating faces nice and clean. With one side of the joint cut I offer it up to another length of timber and it's important to get the two pieces of timber aligned. I can do that by sighting down the length and just making a few adjustments. But another option would be to offer up a straight edge to it. Then I can mark around it and cut out the mating piece. The two pieces should then meet together nice and tight and this is not looking too bad, not perfect but it'll be plenty strong enough, especially because I'm going to be adding glue and driving in some wedges that I cut off camera which will force the joint together nice and tight. I'm also going to add a couple of screws and after waiting for the glue to set I can then trim away the excess and then do a bit of clean up and get it painted in. I did most of this work from looking at a diagram of the joint online while I was working but also from watching Robin Clevitt's excellent video about scarf joints which I got some great tips from and I'll link to those videos below. And finally I can cut it to length and get it installed. And I'm going to get the second roof frame secured to the first frame too. And once the rest of the screws were in it was nice and solid. Just to give you an idea of the total cost of this build, I got most materials from a builder's merchant. The galvanized mesh, that's the 50 millimeter stuff, 27 pounds for two rolls. Two by two pressure treated timber, 167. The three by two pressure treated was 88. I probably spent about another 45 pounds on paint, hardware and fixings. And the mesh that I got for the roof was 10 pounds from a car boot sale. So in total, 337 pounds. I did get a trade discount though from the builder's merchants. So the total cost to me was less than that. I'm going to be doing loads more to this catio in future to make it a fun place to be but for now let's let Mickey into the enclosure to see what he thinks of his new outdoor space. <laughs> 